reasons why we all come to church. And if I had to ask you reasons why, there would be different reasons. And I just would like to ask, just think for a minute, why do we come to church? Why are we here this morning? Are we here for the wrong reasons? Are we here for the right reasons? Do we come out of fear because we're worried that we might not make heaven? Do we come because we think it's a works program and if we don't do this and work at it, something may not happen in our lives? Do we come because someone's told us to come? Or do we come for the right reasons? Do we come so that we can worship the one true living God together corporately? Do we come because the Bible says that we're not to neglect the gathering of ourselves together? Do we come because we need to fellowship? Why do we come to church? Do we come because we know that God wants to change us? You know, every one of us are on a different journey. Every one of us have things that God is working with in our lives. And maybe today's message, you might be thinking, no, that's not really for me, but it is for somebody. Next week, it may be for you. But I trust that every time we come here together, we get something. And I know we do from God's word. We get something during the praise and worship. We get something even through the offering message. Whatever we do, we get something through serving others. We get something through blessing other people around us. But I feel for me, yes, we come to worship the true living God. But if I do not leave here changed, then I almost feel like I haven't allowed God to touch my life. We come here so that we can leave this place changed. So that we can leave this place ready to change this world. Because if we don't leave changed, if we do not allow God to change us, how can we change our world? How can we help to change the people that are around us? And so today I want us to realize, as we continue with the series, this is our second last, last one this, this morning. Next week we will end the series on Kingdom Come. But today I want you to understand that we all have found this treasure in Jesus Christ. A treasure that is priceless. A treasure that is incredible. And in you and I, we have been placed, treasures have been placed within us. And if we can just begin to understand this, we will begin to live our lives outwardly. You know, through this series, we've spoken a lot about the inward things, the things that we need to change, because if we don't change them, we're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. If we don't treat people properly, if we're not doing the right thing, that was a sermon we did a few weeks ago, we may not inherit the kingdom of God, and so we have these internal checks that we have to have in order to change. But if I make a promise to God this morning and say, Lord, I'm not going to do whatever I'm not going to do that I know I shouldn't be doing, and I walk out of here and I've just gone to the same old ways, what has changed in my life? What is different? Lord, I'm going to be faithful to you. Lord, I'm, going to, I'm not going to do what I've been doing. And then we go and do it. What has changed in our lives? And so we need to strive to leave this place changed. And what a great place to be able to change because when we're in his presence, it's like we're on the mountaintop and God is working in our hearts and he's changing our lives so that we can leave here empowered and ready to do great things for him. But so often we just go back to the normal. We go back to the old way of thinking. We go back to the old way of speaking. We go back to the old way of doing things. And in the kingdom, there is a new way of doing things. A new way. We don't serve like we used to serve. We don't speak like we used to speak. We don't do things like we used to do them. There are new ways of doing things. And so we need to become more outward. We need to become external. We need to start reaching out to lives around us. We need to start doing that. A couple of years ago, uh, I don't know if you got that picture there, Carl, um, if you can just put it up. A couple of years ago, we put this picture up. Can you, does anybody remember it? It's a painting by Van Gogh, and it's the church at Alvers. I think that's how you say it. And he drew this, and he put this painting together. And actually, if you look at this painting here, if you remember correctly from those years back, I just wanted to bring this up. It just kept coming back to, to my mind. If you look at the church, it's in the middle of two roads. It's almost like the road was supposed to go straight. And right in the middle of life, there is this church. A church should bring life to people. A church should be open to people. It should have open doors. And if you look at that church, there's actually no doors in the front. There. There's no doors to go in. And this person's just either walking towards and right past the church, not even noticing that there's something that can change his or her life, her life. And can't even see if the person's walking to or away, really. Sometimes I look at it and go, no, she's walking towards. And then other times it's like, I don't know, actually. But just walking on by life, not being able to get in. You know, our lives should not be lives where people are not able to get in. We should have worked out those things in our lives so, people, so we can be open to people. Our vision is to connect imperfect and broken people. How can we connect when all we're doing is focusing on ourselves? When all we're constantly striving to do is work out the problems in our lives. I don't want to get to 70 and 80 and I'm still working out every single problem that I had in my life when I was 20. 
I want to have moved on. I want life to be different. I don't want to be where I was. And I know you don't want to be where you were and are. So to connect imperfect and broken people with an all-powerful, all-knowing and eternal God. And that's what our, our vision is here. But how in that picture can people come into a church? And so I want to uh, exp- help you understand that there are things that we need to understand. There are things that we need to do. There are, there, there, there are places that we may need to go in order to see the kingdom of God being established here on earth. And so I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. There are a couple of parables that Jesus speaks about. And we're just going to read the, them very briefly. Well, they are very brief in any case. And We're going to find out exactly what we have and what we're supposed to do because we need to become more external. We need to start looking and thinking outward. I might say that a couple of times this morning. We need to be more open to God using us so that people's lives can change because the kingdom of God expands because of you and I. Imagine if we just closed these doors and said no one else is allowed and it's just us. Imagine. How would the kingdom of God grow? Imagine if we were out there and God says something to us. And we don't do it. How does the kingdom of God grow? Because the kingdom of God is not just grace place. It's far beyond that. You may speak to somebody when you're in business somewhere else. And and they find Jesus. And they find this treasure. The kingdom of God is growing. And that's what it's about. It's about the kingdom of God. And I know that God is going to stir in our lives things that need to be done. Let's read these parables. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. This is called the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The kingdom of heaven, we're speaking about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, kingdom come. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. This man was so excited, he found, he discovered this hidden treasure. Look at our vision again. Believe discover, share. So let's talk about that word discover. This man was looking for something. And in his looking for something, he discovered a treasure that was hidden in a field. How he found the treasure, I don't know. What kind of treasure it was, I don't know. But he was looking and he found and he discovered this treasure. Look at verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. Someone looking for choice choice pearls, trying to discover the right thing. And when he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and he bought it. Two very similar parables, very short parables. One verse in the Bible each. Well, the one is two, but one verse and two verses. Two parables about the kingdom of God. If we're talking about kingdom come, then these parables apply to you and I. They apply to us. The first one about a man who discovers this treasure that is hidden in a field. He goes out, he's looking, he discovers, and then what he does is he hides the treasure again. I've always wondered why. You know, why does he hide the treasure? What is the point to hiding the treasure? And I've come to realize this is why that that property was owned by someone else. So he put it back. It wasn't his to take in the first place. And so what he did was he thought that treasure was worth more than everything everything and anything that he owned. And he went and sold everything. He sold his house. He sold everything that he possibly could. And he went and he bought a field without a house, but it had a treasure. It was more valuable than everything that he owned. And he went and he bought this treasure, and the treasure became his. We need to ask ourselves, are we willing to give up everything to find this treasure? The second parable is this. The merchant goes out and he's seeking or she is seeking this pearl and she's looking around and she probably goes from store to store and she goes from place to place and she goes from area to area and she's looking for this pearl there are many pearls but she's looking for this one pearl that is of great price of great value and eventually finds this pearl finds this pearl of great value and so the merchant goes and sells everything everything again and buys this one pearl i don't know how about you but if you found a pearl of great price You'd probably just admire it and say, okay, that belongs in a museum. I don't know. Would you go and sell everything so that all you have is a pearl and the clothes on your back? This is what the merchant did. This is what the, the man looking for the treasure did. Sold everything just for this pearl. Why a pearl? Well, maybe because if it was gold or a diamond, those things can be changed. A pearl is perfect. No one ever changes a pearl. You don't do anything with a pearl. You don't put facets on it to make it shine or anything. A pearl is perfect just like it is. 
And so I believe that Jesus is using this illustration in this parable, just as he did all the time, to show that this pearl was perfect, representing the kingdom of God. The treasure was so valuable, representing the kingdom of God, and you and I have found this treasure. Imagine, we have found a treasure that is, that, that there is no value to it. We cannot even put a value to it. And the treasure is Jesus Christ. And when we found him, we didn't have to pay the price with our lives. Jesus paid the price so that we could have this treasure. But the Bible constantly says, as we receive Jesus, there are things that we need to give away. The old life we need to give away. In fact, the things that we need to give up and let go of are the ugly things. The ugly things that have, have come into our lives. And Jesus is just saying, give me the new. So in these parables, there are people that have been discovering the treasure. They've been discovering this thing and they, well, they've been looking and searching and then all of a sudden they come upon this treasure and they find it. This is the treasure they have found. And this is what the kingdom of God is like, this treasure. This is what Jesus is like, like this treasure. You know, we've sometimes had challenges here at, at the church where we've put out a challenge to say, hey, go and tell somebody that Jesus loves them. Hey, go and tell somebody something good. Just live the life so that their lives can change. But I want to just... From, from these parables, just say this. Do you know that in your life, the people in your life, the people around you, the people in your sphere, there are some people that are searching. They're searching right now. They're like that person on the, on the, on the screen at the Church of Alvos. They, they're looking for something. They're searching, but they haven't found anything. Do you know that if we keep silent and say nothing while they're searching, they might find the wrong thing. They might find one of the other pearls that are not so great greatly valued. There's only one pearl that is price, priceless. There is only one treasure that is priceless, and his name is Jesus. And the thing is, we have the answer. So there are people in our lives and around us that are searching for the true meaning of life. They're searching for why they are here, and we have the answer, and we have the treasure. Yet we're letting them search and saying, oh, you know what, Lord, the Lord will help them find the treasure. Well, they haven't just stopped to think that the Lord wants you to help them to find the treasure, not to force them, but to show them the way. And as much as this is a challenge for you, it's a challenge for me. And I know, just like I prayed earlier, for some of us, we may be going through difficult times in life, and God is saying for us to do something, and the thing that we're going through is holding us back from doing what God wants us to do. In other words, we're not living the life that God wants us to live, and then God is asking us to minister minister to someone and we feel like a hypocrite because we're not living like we should and that's why church we need to get to that place where we're living our lives out for God every single day here at church when we get home later that we're treating our families properly that we're doing the right thing when we get to work that we're doing the right thing that we're showing the love of God because the way we live the way we speak the way we do things in the kingdom of God have to be different to the way the world does it because if it's not then what kingdom do we represent? I know this may be hard, but that's the truth. We need to come with the attitude because Jesus gave everything. Just like these people gave up everything, we need to come with the attitude that I'm willing to give up everything for the kingdom of God. I thought of this long and hard when I was thinking of doing, uh, going through this message. I thought to myself, I really sat down and I thought, yo, imagine, what would I do if God said, you know, Mark, you need to give up everything now. Sell everything. You can walk to church on a Sunday. Get rid of everything. Ask somebody for a room. Just get rid of everything. Just trust me. Give me everything. How many of us would give up everything to gain Jesus? It's just a thought. I'm not saying anything else. Think about it. Yet, Jesus is not asking us to give up all those things, but to give up the things that are holding us back. And yet we find it so difficult. You know, if Jesus said, you know what, guys, we've got to give up everything, we'd almost, we'd all immediately find it easy just to give up the difficult things. No, Lord, we'd, we'd start bargaining with God, and all of a sudden it'll be okay for us to give up the wrong things. Why don't we just give up the wrong things in any case so that we can move forward in the kingdom? We're going to carry on reading. There's another parable here, and I really think this ties it all together because not only is the treasure in the kingdom Jesus. But we're going to see here in this, in this parable that we have been given treasures to give to other people. And if we're not going to use those treasures, just like we spoke last week with the talents, 
We're going to die not having fulfilled our potential. The servant who didn't use the talents, he was called a wicked and a lazy servant. The ones who used what God had given them were called good and faithful servants. Now here the Bible speaks of good things. Let's carry on reading in verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down and sorted the good fish into crates and threw the bad ones away. They didn't throw the bad ones back into the sea, they threw the bad ones away. This is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous. In other words, the good from the bad. Throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? He asked. And yes, they said, we understand. You see, the treasure of the kingdom of God is not found in our valuables. It's not found in our status and in our fame. It's not found in money in, and in what we have. The treasure of the kingdom here, because the kingdom of God is like a dragnet going out to sweep in the fish. The kingdom of God is about people. And we can say, yes, I'm good. I'm good because Jesus has made me good. I'm good and I'm saved because I'm a child of God and I'm going to heaven. But you know that every day there are pe bad people that are searching, if we can put it in that context. You understand what I'm saying? There are people who would be looked at upon as bad, wicked unrighteous we walk amongst them and they are searching and yet we do nothing about it we do nothing and God wants us to do something because he's saying there are people I don't know what it would be like to be in heaven one day and see somebody that you knew you could minister to and lift them oh but Lord they didn't deserve my forgiveness you know like in Nineveh Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because they didn't, he felt they didn't deserve forgiveness. There are people in our lives who might think, oh, you don't deserve this. Everyone deserves it because we have all been forgiven. We're all forgiven. There will be good and bad. We need to stop just looking at what we have and share it with others because this is what the last part of this parable says. Then he added, Every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple. Do you know that every single one of us have become disciples? We're all here. We've been discipled and we need to disciple. Every religious law, uh, every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. When we become disciples, when we become people of the kingdom of God, we become like a homeowner. And in our storeroom, there are jewels. There are treasures, new treasures, old treasures, all kinds of treasures that we can give and bless other people with. The greatest treasure of all, Jesus Christ. The ways of God, even the old ancient ways that we read in the word of God, treasures that we have. But how are we sharing them? How are we sharing them? Are we doing something about it? Or do our lives line up to not being able to minister to other people? The treasure that God wants to use is in us. Our Lord Jesus, He's with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. That treasure is here. You know, a storeroom, we have a storeroom. The storeroom's in this church. Oh, I don't know what, you just get another storeroom and it's full before you know, you know it. I don't know, it's just one of those things. This morning, I think, Charmaine, it was an obstacle course trying to get through into the storeroom because of everything that was there. Um, so we try and keep everyone on their toes and fit and able to obstacle things, uh, get over obstacles. But a storeroom is there to keep things. But we've always said, if things stay in the storeroom for too long and we don't need them, then we need to give it away. There's some treasures in your storerooms, the storeroom of your heart that has been lying there for too long and God wants to use it. He wants you to use that treasure and give it away. We need to tell people about Jesus and show their treasure. A very sad thing happened this week. There was a death in the church. A very important person died this week. And so I just want to read the obituary of this person that died. Our church was saddened this last week to learn of the death of our most valued member, someone else. Someone else died. 
For many, many years as part of the church, someone else did far more than a normal person's share of the work. Whenever there was a job to do, or a class to teach, or a meeting to attend, everybody said, let somebody else do it. Whenever leadership was mentioned, this wonderful person was looked up to for inspiration as well as the results. Someone else can work for that group. It was common knowledge that someone else was among the most generous givers. Whenever there was a financial need, everyone assumed someone else would make up the difference. Now someone else is gone. We wonder what we're going to do. Someone else left a principle, a wonderful principle and example to follow. But who is going to follow it? Who is going to do the things that someone else did? When you're asked to extend God's kingdom, remember this. We can no longer depend on someone else. God wants to use you and he wants to use me. There are treasures in your life and in mine. What are we doing about it? We need to dust them off. And when you share the gospel with those people who are searching, just think about it. If they're searching, they are ready to discover what we know. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we are here to be used of you. It's not up to somebody else. Somebody else is dead and gone. We are here. We are here to do the work you have called us to do. So, Father, we pray and ask you to use us. If we've been living wrong, Lord, we've already seen that we can change and soar. We can soar above all the things, the problems, the challenges. We can change. You created us to change. There's no such word as I can't because, Lord, you've created us to change the things that need to be changed in our lives. And you've created us with treasure that only we can give treasure that you've placed in our lives. And because we have found the treasure of all treasures, all these other things we have can mean so much to others as they find true life. So Lord, we surrender our lives again to you. We surrender all to you, Jesus.